Dad, can I stay home today? The eight-year-old boy asked, pushing his pancakes around his plate with a dollop of jam. Yegor looked up from packing his son's backpack, his expression softening. No, Vanya, I can't leave you alone all day. It's Saturday, and we might have to deal with some urgent surgeries. But we can stop by a cafe for ice cream afterwards. Come on, let's go. He finished his pancakes in a few quick bites and headed to get dressed. As he thought about his son, he felt a pain of sadness. Leaving Vanya alone at home was always tough, especially since Igor had been working as a surgeon at a private clinic for the past five years. When Vanya was just three, his wife had left him. She packed her things and left with a truck driver, leaving Igor to manage alone. You ruined my life, she had shouted as Igor came home to find her with another man. You made me have this child without even asking if I wanted one. Now, if you want to play house, do it without me. With that, she grabbed a few belongings and walked out. Vanya cried at first, missing his mother who had been part of his life. But over time, he began to forget. When he had asked Igor about his mother, since all the other kids had one, Igor could only explain that some things were beyond his control. At the clinic, the nurses adored Vanya, showering him with sweets and teaching him how to bandage wounds. Everyone understood how hard it was for Yegor to manage alone so they made accommodations, letting him bring Vanya to work. Vanya, help me with the vitamins for the patients. Call Semenov from the fifth ward for his shots. Even Agarovich, could you please pass me the stethoscope? Vanya was always busy, sometimes doing his homework at his father's desk while Yegor was in surgery or on rounds. He was a diligent student and well-behaved. Vanya also visited the patients, greeting them and asking if they needed anything. The patients looked forward to his visits. His presence brought a fresh perspective to their routine days. Vanya would chat about the weather and the interesting things he had seen, and many noticed that they felt better simply from having him sit with them, talk, or hold their hand. When a patient's condition didn't improve despite the medication, Vanya would often greet them, hold their hand, or gently place his own hand on their clenched fists or warm palm. Remarkably, the next day, their condition would often show significant improvement. While no one truly believed he was a magician or healer, there was a hopeful almost unspoken belief in the possibility of a miracle. Vanya, could you be a good helper and fetch the thermometer from the third ward for Grandpa Petrovic? The nurse asked, handing him a simple task while she organized pills into cups. The third ward was a bit isolated, with a faded, worn-out number on the door. The clinic was in the process of updating its signs and this one had yet to be replaced. Vanya quietly opened the door, planning to ask who Grandpa Petrovic was but was surprised to find only one bed inside. Nearby were some unfamiliar, sharp-looking instruments. He stepped in cautiously and approached the bed. Lying there was an elderly woman who reminded him a bit of their neighbor. She was hooked up to various tubes and wires and appeared to be sleeping. Intrigued, Vanya tiptoed closer to get a better look at her face. Her eyes had delicate wrinkles and her lips seemed to curve into a gentle smile. She must be a kind person, Vanya thought. I wish I had a grandmother like her. As he sighed and prepared to leave, he accidentally brushed his hand against hers. At that moment, something strange occurred. It felt as if Vanya was in a dream, watching scenes unfold from the side. He saw glimpses of her life. She was with a man in a white coat, then she was brought home by ambulance and later she was seen emerging from a house with a bundle, while the man brought her flowers. He saw her sitting on a couch, crying bitterly as the man comforted her. Then the images blurred and faded, leaving the final scene of her looking older and alone. At that moment, the door to the ward swung open. Vanya, what are you doing here? Yegor asked, standing in the doorway with surprise. Vanya, startled, quickly pulled his hand away, causing the visions to vanish. He stood there, looking around with a puzzled expression until his eyes met his father's, pulling him back to reality. What happened to this lady? Vanya asked, looking up at his father with concern. She's in a coma, Igor explained. She fell down the stairs and lay there for a long time before anyone found her. Why didn't anyone help her? Vanya's sympathy grew as he approached the bed again, feeling a pang of sadness at her isolation. She fell early in the morning. Her neighbor noticed she didn't come out for her usual evening walk and went to check on her. When she didn't answer the door, they had to call the police to break in. She had been unconscious for a long time. But you didn't answer my question. 
I was sent to get a thermometer for Grandpa Petrovic, but I mixed up the wards, Vanya admitted, looking guilty. As Igor prepared to leave, he turned back. And who is the girl you mentioned? Where did she go? Igor paused in the doorway as Vanya recounted the visions he had seen. Igor knew his son had a vivid imagination, but this seemed like an exaggeration. It sounds like you've been watching too much TV or sci-fi, Igor said, trying to mask his frustration. He was almost on the verge of tears, not believing his son's account. The neighbor had mentioned that the patient lived alone. Since Margarita Fyodorovna had moved into the cottage, the only person around was the gardener, who happened to be off that day. If there had been someone else in her life, they would have contacted the clinic by now. Vanya considered this. Could his visions have been just a figment of his imagination? He began to think about his next move. Where does the lady live? He asked, trying to sound casually interested but already formulating a plan. It turned out the house was close to the clinic. At eight years old, Vanya wasn't a baby anymore. He knew the clinic like the back of his hand and could easily slip out unnoticed. With summer upon them, he didn't need to worry about grabbing his hat and jacket from his locker, which could have gotten him caught. As Vanya approached the cottage at the address he'd been given, he was awestruck by the grandeur of the house. Wow, what a mansion, he thought to himself. He walked along the concrete fence, trying to peek through to see what lay beyond. Moving further down, he spotted a balcony with intricate railings on the second floor. Just as he was feeling disheartened and contemplating leaving, he noticed the mailbox. Something white was visible inside. After glancing around to ensure no one was watching, Vanya carefully retrieved the envelope from the mailbox. The seal bore unfamiliar, non-Russian characters that he had never seen before. Hastily concealing his discovery, Vanya realized he needed to leave before anyone caught him. With his father's surgery taking precedence, their cafe outing was off for the day. But Vanya now had something important to investigate. He quietly slipped into the ward where Margarita Fyodorovna lay. As he observed her, he noticed a subtle change in her cheek, a faint pinkish hue and the slight fluttering of her eyelashes. Probably just my imagination, he thought. He pulled up a chair to the bedside and sat down, carefully taking out the envelope he found. Hello, you don't know me, but I'm Vanya. My dad works here as a surgeon and mentioned that you're alone with no visitors. But I saw you with a girl. Is she your daughter? Vanya continued to talk, filling the silence. I was at your house, it's so beautiful and big. How can you live there all alone? It must be a bit scary. He gently placed the letter in Margarita's hand, and her fingers twitched slightly. For some reason, Vanya felt that searching for her here was the right choice. Just then, his father entered the ward and noticed the envelope in the patient's hand. Even, Igor said sternly, using his son's full name when he was upset. What's this? Where did this letter come from? It might be from Margarita Fyodorovna's daughter, he recalled, remembering her patronymic. We should probably read it. He looked at the nurse with a hint of urgency. What if it's from relatives? Yegor wrestled with his conscience over whether to open the letter, but practicality won out. The patient needed her family. The letter turned out to be from Margarita's daughter. She wrote that she had left her partner, Julian, and was returning to Russia. She was thrilled that her mother liked the house she had found for her and hoped to stay with her for a month while she found her own place. Well, she has someone after all, Vanya said, jumping with excitement. Yes, it's good news, Yegor thought, relieved he had opened the envelope. Now, they needed to find the daughter's contact details. He went through Margarita's personal belongings from when she was admitted, searching for a phone. If you want, you can stay here, Yegor said to Vanya, who nodded eagerly. When they finally found Margarita's daughter, Igor was grateful that her phone wasn't locked. It was easy to find her contact details. After a few rings, the line connected. The daughter was at the airport, preparing to fly home to her mother. Igor quickly explained the situation to her. She arrived with her suitcase and was ushered to Igor. Despite her disheveled appearance and nervous demeanor, she immediately approached him. She had just managed to leave her partner, Julian. Though this thought briefly crossed Igor's mind, he quickly focused on explaining the situation to Margarita's daughter and leading her to her mother's bedside. Vanya was still there. As the daughter saw her mother, she instinctively recognized her as the girl from Vanya's vision. She rushed to the bed. Mom. Mom, it's me, Lena. Can you hear me? Lena gently stroked her mother's hand, tears streaming down her face. 
I told you not to go with that Gerard. Why did you let me go? Nothing good came of it. And now you're lying here. Lena sobbed. Yegor had to gently guide her to his office. Once Lena had calmed down with some Valerian, he learned more about her. Lena was Margarita's only child. Her father had passed away three years ago, and they had run a family business together. The publishing house had flourished since her father's time. Business was thriving, and soon an international partner expressed interest in opening a chain of publishing houses in France. The partner also took a liking to Lena. He was a decent guy, and her mother enthusiastically supported their budding romance. Despite this, Lena couldn't envision a future in either the business or the relationship. Eventually, she felt compelled to return home, and that's when things took a turn. Dad, Lena, Vanya burst into the office, his eyes wide with urgency. They all rushed to Margarita's ward, where she was sitting on the bed, attempting to detach the wires and sensors connected to her. Mama? Margarita Fyodorovna, this is a nightmare, Lena exclaimed as she entered the room. Margarita glared at Igor with fiend indignation. Doctor, why have you entangled this poor woman like a fly in a web? Let me help. Igor rolled up his sleeves and began assisting in removing the sensors. Just then, Margarita's gaze fell on Igor's forearm. Doctor, is that a birthmark on your arm? She asked, puzzled. Igor shrugged casually. Nurses arrived and set up an IV drip. Soon after, Margarita began to regain her senses. Thank you, she said but this shouldn't have happened, especially not now. I need to finish my shift. With Igor's shift over, they were preparing to go home. Lena wanted to stay with her mother, but Margarita insisted she get some rest after her trip, assuring her that she wasn't in immediate danger. After some discussion, they invited Lena to join them, and she accepted gladly. On the way, they stopped at a supermarket, bought ice cream for Vanya, some fine wine for themselves, and tried to make the best of the day. During the drive, Lena shared more about her family. We were overjoyed when our son was born, she began. He was a healthy, strong little boy. I thought I was a good mother because he was always well-fed. I played with him, sang him songs, and took him for walks. But once, when he was just eight months old, I ran into his store for less than five minutes to get some formula. When I came out, the stroller was empty. I nearly lost my mind. Back then, there were no security cameras. We searched everywhere, put ads in newspapers, on TV, and even posted flyers. We offered a reward. He had a distinctive birthmark in the shape of a horseshoe on his forearm. Just like yours, Igor. Everyone stared in stunned silence. Then all eyes turned toward Igor. I come from a respected family, Lena continued. My mother is a professor and my father is a doctor of medical sciences. They're both well regarded. I'm their only child. My father passed away eight years ago, and my mother five years ago. She left me a letter, instructing me to read it only after her death. With everything that's happened, divorces and all, I got so caught up in life that I forgot about it. He slapped his forehead. It's in my safe. I'll get it. He hurried to his office, leaving everyone anxiously awaiting another revelation. When he returned, he held the envelope with trembling hands, despite his calm demeanor as a surgeon. May I? Lena asked, taking the envelope from him. She opened it with practice ease and handed it back, her curiosity palpable. Igor hesitated, his anxiety about the letter evident. If I'm Margarita's son, then Lena must be my sister, Vanya continued. I was thinking of inviting her on a date. What was I thinking? Lena seemed to have similar thoughts, her face pensive and distressed. Margarita, lying on her pillows like a throne, looked utterly dejected as if she had yet another secret to reveal. There's more, Margarita said, taking a deep breath as if bracing herself. I fell into a deep depression, lying for days, barely eating, and lost 20 kilograms. My husband eventually managed to pull me out of that state, but then I faced another blow. Hormonal imbalance meant no more children. Again, my husband supported me, saying there were children who needed parents. That's how Lena came to us. I told you I saw the girl but you didn't believe me. Vanya looked at his father with a mixture of resentment and disbelief. Igor was stunned, at a loss for words. The emotions were overwhelming. Everyone realized they would need to process this on their own. Nyusha remained calm. As if in a dream, he took Lena's hand again. He recalled seeing her leave with a bundle, her father greeting her with flowers. And now, grown up and facing his own reality. 
Thank you for staying with the story until the end. If you enjoyed it, please support it with a thumbs up. All the best.